Hey guys and welcome back to another mod review. Today we're going to be taking a look at a mod called Ultimate Firefight Sand Trap by Weaver900. Now if you've been part of the Halo mod community, you'll recognize some of Weaver's work. He's created the Secrets of Sand Trap, which is a custom campaign mission complete with music, uh, Sentinel Enforcers, and a firefight at the end. You know, the whole works. Just to name a few. And then coming out with a sequel called the Mysteries of the Mountains, which is even more ambitious than the Secret of the Sand Trap and serves as a sequel. And that one actually has custom cutscenes and a more fleshed out story. And you can also pilot a scarab and fight another scarab. Needless to say, Weaver puts out very high quality mods. So you best believe I was excited when I saw he uploaded another one. Without further ado, let's take a look at this mod. Like the title of the name suggests, this is a co-op firefight mode for Halo 3 that was inspired by SPV3's firefight mode. Now if you don't know what SPV3 is, uh, it stands for single player version 3 and it was a mod for Halo 1 that revamped a lot of Halo 1's old graphics, it added new weapons, vehicles, uh, locations. It kind of uh, redid some of the old levels and added new areas. It was also one of the first times Halo 1 ran at 60 FPS. And one other major feature it added was Firefight to Halo CE. Now, I never personally played SPV3's Firefight mode, so I was a bit curious to know what inspirations were taken from the mod. So I reached out to Weaver, and this is what he said. In terms of SPV3's inspirations, the hero system is almost the exact same, and the reward system is very similar. I actually worked on some unreleased maps for SPV3's firefight mode that unfortunately wasn't released before the SPV3 project ended, and my time on that inspired a lot of the features in Ultimate Firefight. So we got a good amount of background knowledge, definitely answered my question, and it also brought up two features of this mod, the hero system and the reward system. Before we get into those two, I want to talk about how this mod works. Ultimate Firefight is broken up to waves and rounds. Ten waves will make up a round, and there are infinite rounds. Every wave you complete unlocks a new enemy variant that will be randomly factored in to create new enemy squads in future waves. So, for an example, my first wave was Brutes and Grunts, and when I cleared that wave, I got access to Jackals. So, the next round, I had this random mixture of Brutes, Grunts, and Jackals that I fought against. Later on, I unlocked more enemies like Wraiths, Hunters, and Sniper Jackals, and ever, as a result, the wave was a lot more varied. Now something to note though, was I never ran into moments where I felt like there was too many of one enemy. Now I remember reading in the post that it mentioned it was a tailored selection of enemies being spawned, so it got me thinking. How exactly does this work? My initial theory is that every enemy has a point value attached to it, determining its difficulty, and as the waves progress, the game will choose those higher weighted enemies to spawn, therefore making each wave harder. That was my theory anyway, so I decided to ask Weaver to see if my theory was kind of in the ballpark. Alright, so it turns out my theory on how the enemy spawns work was true, however we Weaver mentions that he changed it for a more uh, simpler design. So once you've unlocked an enemy, it has a chance of appearing on certain waves. So for example, he mentions that race can only spawn in the last four waves of a round. Now that makes sense from a, a balancing standpoint because you don't want someone to be in the first few rounds, you know, and then they don't have uh, any kind of like power weapons. Like you want the reward system and the difficulty to kind of coincide uh, that way you actually have like, you know, some sort of like weapon or vehicle or whatever that can, you know, deal with something like a wraith or even like multiple wraiths. Uh, moving on, more powerful enemies use a difficulty modifier that's based on how many waves slash rounds you complete. Um, now we, now I'm no expert, but, you know, I can point stuff out. So we can see that right here. Like you said, it's based on how many waves you complete. And then it's, it, he's mentions it's also determined on how many players you have in a game. So if you're solo, you know, it'd be a 1.0 modifier all the way up to four people, which is 
And that's going to determine if stealth enemies and vehicles should spawn if they end up getting selected. Uh, if we move down the page here, we can see how the four individual squads that make up each wave are decided. Which will be right here. So you have the captain, which can be a brute or elite. And again, that is... Depending on its rank, you know, will be determined on this difficulty modifier. Two to four core troops, which again can be like brutes or elites. And then you got cannon fodder like grunts, jackals. And then we also got some kind of like specialty troops here. So uh, there's like these grunts running around with like turrets that, you know, I'm sure you've seen them if you've played Halo before. Uh, jackals, snipers, heavy elites. And then he also mentions that. The system can randomly make an alternate squad where the whole squad is instead replaced by jetpack brutes, drones, stealth elites. Now I get it. You're probably sitting here wondering, blah, blah, blah. Why do I care about this? And I, you know, it just interested me from like a technical standpoint. So I figured I'd show you guys, but you know, let's get into the more interesting stuff. Along with the normal waves, there are also special waves and boss waves. Special waves will occur on waves 5 and 8. And they replace all the normal enemy spawns with different themed waves. So in my playthrough, I got Flood Invasion, which replaces all the enemies with, you guessed it, Flood. And you can also see these Flood tentacles in the distance, adding to the theme. I also had Light Show. So you had Elites with... Sentinel beams and brutes holding Halo Reach's focus rifle. There's apparently 10 of them in total, so have fun discovering what the rest of them are. On the last wave of each round, you're going to fight the boss wave. Now, there's a few different enemies, enemy bosses that are in rotation. And the ones that I mentioned here is brute war chiefs and chieftains, elite zealots, and ultras, and even a scarab. So I ended up fighting the scarab, which is pretty cool. And the, on the second round, the Brute War Chieftains. Now keep in mind too though, that, you know, you're given kind of like overpower rewards, you know, the previous round. So in my case, I got like a tank to fight the Scarab. So, you know, it may be difficult, but you're still, you know, given more than capable equipment to deal with any boss you come across. Moving on, brings us to the Hero System and the Revive System. So after you complete a round, you are given a random hero unlock of which there are 10. So you can get characters like Master Chief, Miranda Keys, and eight other ones that I'm not too sure of. But either way, it's a pretty cool mechanic. You know, eventually they can go down, which brings us to our next mechanic here, which is the revive system. So this works for the heroes as well as co-op friends you have. Instead of just dying immediately, you go into this down state where your teammate can come and pick you up. That way you can avoid wasting a life. But if you do die, it's actually kind of cool in a way because when you respawn, you respawn back in this drop pod and you come landing on the ground. Now it does waste a life, although it's a pretty cool animation. And now without further ado, let's get to my closing statements. Overall, Ultimate Firefight Sandtrap brought me and my friends a lot of fun. I normally don't play Firefight because I find it to be a little bit boring for my taste but I actually really enjoyed it here. One other thing I forgot to mention is that this mod incorporates a lot of other mods. So for example, the updated HUD, custom enemy models, and my new favorite vehicle, the Bulldog, has been on Nexus mods for a while now. But to me, it's always interesting to see how these you know, different enemy models and tags can be woven together to create you know, a mod like this. I also wanted to say thank you to Weaver for giving us some new content and I appreciate the time you took to answer some of my questions I know they might have been a little tedious I guess but it really did give me a good look at the behind the scenes of how a mod like this works can't say enough I, I appreciate it now if you guys are interested in playing this mod I have a download link in the description be sure to check out some of Weaver's other mods as well again very good stuff I've played them both, recommend both. And with that, that wraps up our showcase. Hopefully you guys learned something, 
and I will catch you in the next video.